Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Looney and I'm presenting today on Overleaf, which is a collaborative LaTeX authoring platform. You can reach me at ryan.looney at overleaf.com and also you can reach me and my uh, support team at support at overleaf.com. What we're going to do today is I'm just going to give you some background on Overleaf and on LaTeX, show you some um, Overleaf basics and spend most of the time in a live demo. Um, you're welcome to follow along with the live demo. So if you already have an Overleaf account, um, I'll be giving you a URL where you can go um, work on a practice project that also has some handy informative links in it. If you're not already um, registered on Overleaf, you can go to overleaf.com slash register and register for free um, and uh, follow along if you'd like. Otherwise, you can just watch and I'll be walking through um, all of this um, as we continue on. You might be wondering why I'm showing you a picture of this pod parking at Heathrow. If you happen to be in Heathrow Terminal 5, you can follow the signs to pod parking and you'll see this little driverless taxi that will show, shuttle you back and forth between the parking lot and the terminal. And this is where Overleaf came from. Our two co-founders, John Hammersley and John Lees Miller, were math PhD students, and they were working on making this driverless taxi system actually happen. And as mathematicians, they were using LaTeX to write up their work and their research. So if you're not yet familiar with LaTeX, um, it's not unlike HTML, where you're writing in plain text and then surrounding that text with commands to describe its meaning and what it should look like once it's compiled. LaTeX will process that text and all of those commands and give you a really nice uh, formatted PDF typeset output. Here are a few examples just of an itemized list, um, what it would look like in the code and what it might look like when it is output um, uh, an image. And then also where um, LaTeX shines is um, with these mathematical expressions. Um, once you learn a little bit uh, of those commands in LaTeX, it becomes a lot easier to write mathematics within your work. This is a screenshot of Overleaf. And so you'll see here, this is what that source code might look like. And then this is what it looks like when it's compiled. We'll see a lot more of this as we get into the demo. So what John and John were discovering was that collaborating in LaTeX was pretty challenging. LaTeX is a open source software that's been around for 40 plus years. And so everybody has their own flavor. You have to have a local installation um, that can be very difficult to install and maintain. Folks might have different uh, setups than you have. So if you send them your LaTeX project, they might not be able to open it or compile it properly on their computer. Um, and LaTeX also, uh, a project on LaTeX isn't just a single file, it's multiple files. So you'll have um, a main file or even uh, many main files if you have a large document with a lot of chapters. Um, images are uploaded and held separately. And then you might also have a bibliography file um, and then class files and style files that um, give you other options in how your document is going to look when it is compiled and complete. So what John and John decided they wanted to do was have one version of their project in the cloud where people could go and have access to it. Um, and that's where Overleaf came from. So this is uh, about what it looks like today. We have a couple of new features and a few changes here. I think we need to update our screenshot with some new things we, we've uh, released very recently. Um, but that idea still remains that Overleaf enables collabor collaboration. Um, there is one version in the cloud for everyone. You don't have to install anything locally. Everything is accessible through um, a web browser. You can control who can see and edit your project. We have some integrations with different services and also integrations with um, various publishers and their submission sites. Um, and then we also have uh, version tracking. So you can see who made what changes when and um, 
see uh, what has been changed over the, the life of your paper. Um, we do have a lot of different plans. Um, most of our users are actually free users. Um, if you want to subscribe, you do get some uh, really great features that I'll show you in the next slide. And um, when we get into the demo, my account, of course, is a premium account. So um, I'll be pointing out some of the premium features um, as we go along. But um, the free account will work perfectly well for, for a lot of your, your uses, and it's certainly fine for our demo today. Um, we have a lot of different plans for individuals, and then there are also group plans. Um, which allow you to buy multiple licenses for a lab or a small department. And then we have institutional plans for um, larger organizations like entire universities, for instance, for giving um, everyone at the university or everyone within a school at the university access to the um, professional level overleaf um, plans. And then the professional plans give you an unlimited number of invited collaborators. The other plans give you um, fewer numbers of invited collaborators, but all these other features um, also are available to all of the other paid plans as well. Um, so we've got uh, track changes and comments, advanced reference searching, uh, reference manager integration and syncing, full document history. Uh, we now have also a symbol palette, which is brand new. Um, and then we also have integration with some other services like Dropbox and GitHub. Okay, we're gonna go into the demo in just a moment. And if you'd like to follow along, this is a link to a read-only version of the document that I'll be working on. So you can click on that or just type in bit.ly slash overleaf hyphen intro to. And you'll see that um, appear. And just to give you a heads up of what's coming in the demo, we're going to do a whole bunch of things. We're going to create a project, look at your dashboard, edit, share, and look at some of those nice sharing features. And then we'll also make sure to point out how to download and submit your project when you're done. So I'm going to go ahead and um, switch over to my web browser here. And this is my project dashboard. If you have just created your account uh, on Overleaf, it will prompt you to create a project. Um, and if you have other projects in your account, like I do here, there are several different ways you can create a project. So there's this big giant new project button. And this actually gives you access um, to a couple of example projects. If you have a zip file um, with LaTeX files from something you've been working on or someone else has been working on somewhere else, you can upload that zip file to create a project. Um, and then you also have access to all of our templates and free accounts as well have access to all of our templates. Most of these are user created um, and they're there to give you a, a nice starting point uh, for getting started with an Overleaf project so that you don't have to start from scratch uh, when you want to write your CV, for instance. We also have quite a few um, publisher created templates and those are wonderful because that means that they are specially designed to, um, to have all the requirements that a journal would for publication. So um, if they want your references in Chicago and one inch margins, that will all be already built in to the uh, publisher template. Another way you can create a new project is to copy a project. So we can um, either tick on, uh, we can either uh, click on the copy icon over in the dashboard and it will create a copy in our dashboard. Or if you're already in a project, like you might have been if you followed that link, you can go up to the menu and copy the project here. And this will give you a copy of the project that you can work on yourself. You are the project owner and it doesn't change um, the shared project that you've been working on. I'm gonna go back to my project dashboard and I'm gonna go into um, my copy of the project that I had shared with you. So I've already made a few changes um, from what you've seen. And um, I've also put a few helpful links within this project. So um, even once you're done, once you see this in your Overleaf dashboard, you know you can come here and find your quick guide to LaTeX and some other um, helpful um, links. 
Other links to documentation, if you go into this menu, um, all the way down at the bottom, bottom we've got some documentation uh, here and then also a contact us um, in case you wanna get in touch with us. Um, but in this menu, this is a great place um, to go. You can download your source from here. You can also download your compiled PDF from here and I'll show you another place to do that soon. Um, but there are lots of options here so you can change your editor theme um, to something dark if you prefer a dark theme. Um, you can pick your um, language that you want your spell check to be in. We have over 40 languages available for that. And then we also have a lot of other um, options that you can set here for yourself. So we saw before in a screenshot this editor here and then the preview over on the right. And we now have a lot more options in how you can um, view your layout. So um, we have this layout button up here. And if you um, click on that little eye, it gives you some information about that. It is a very new feature. We're super excited to have now the ability to have our PDF in a separate tab. So you can put your PDF uh, preview into one monitor and then keep your source code over on the other. Um, but there are some other ways that you can um, set up your screen depending on how you like it. I'm gonna just leave it here for now. One thing I will show you is that if you click on this full screen, um, these little double arrows here and you get your full screen that's just source code. Um, if you go looking for your PDF and you can't find it, it's over here. You just have to click that back to split screen. Over here, we've also got some um, controls for your files here. We call this left-hand part the files pane. So you can create a new file. You can create folders um, so that you can organize your files, which is really helpful when you have bigger documents um, with lots of images and chapters and structures and things. Um, and then you can upload files as well. So if you have um, images or a bibliography file, um, if you click that, you'll be able to upload files from lots of different places, including an external URL. Um, so if you want to um, point to a, a different file, you can. And this is also where if you have a premium account, you can link up your Mendeley or your Zotero account to have your um, references uh, pull right from there and be automatically updated. Up here, we also have our source and rich text toggle. You can toggle over to rich text and you can see there's still a lot of um, code here, but it is really helpful if you're just typing along and um, you're not that familiar with LaTeX or maybe you're working with someone who also is not that familiar with LaTeX. Um, here you can also uh, do a little bit of basic formatting. So you'll see, um, uh, for instance, if I highlight some of this, I can make it bold, I can make it italic, um, that kind of thing. You'll notice that some, there is still some code there, so it helps to acknowledge the existence of code, um, but it does make it a little bit easier once you're getting started. If you have a premium account, you'll also see this um, simple palette toggle here. And that's really helpful when you're writing in math mode. So if you're writing an inline math mode, you use the dollar sign here. Um, and then if I want to put in, for instance, pi, and I can't remember what the command for that is, I can just click on that um, and it automatically puts the correct command in there. If I then go and recompile, you can see a little teeny tiny pi right here um, where I put that. So that's a really helpful premium feature that's also pretty new. Um, you'll see here we've got our recompile button, which I had just pressed, and there are a lot of options behind recompile. Um, so you can compile in draft mode, which will just sort of put placeholders in for your images and not load the images, so it'll go a little bit faster. Um, and then we are now testing some stop on first error, um, which means if you have a lot of errors and maybe your compile is timing out because of them, um, you now have the opportunity to just stop when you hit that first one to try and go and fix it. Um, we do strongly recommend that you fix your errors as you um, see them and you'll see errors. Let me see if I can uh, make an error that won't completely break everything. Oh, that one's a warning. Um, 
but you'll see um, the little uh, warning sign or little red X pop up um, when there is an error or a warning in your document. If you don't see it when you type it, once you hit that recompile button, if you have errors, you'll see a red balloon up here. Um, and we really encourage you to fix those. You won't be able to submit your project um, to one of those journal templates, for instance, if you have um, errors in it. Right here is also where you can download your PDF. And then here we've got um, all of our great collaborative features. So we do have track changes. Um, I can turn that on for everyone. And here I can just start typing and you'll see that it, it keeps track of those. And then my collaborators can go in and reject or accept it. Um, and then we also have the ability to comment on things here. So I'm just gonna put comment. And we can have a little conversation back and forth. There is also a chat panel here. So if you have collaborators um, in your project, you can actually have a live chat going here as you edit together. Speaking of collaborators, if you want to share your project, um, you can invite collaborators here. So I'm going to invite myself um, and I can make it so that I can edit and then I'll click share. I'll get an email invitation and there will also be a message, uh, a banner in my dashboard telling me I've been invited to this project. If you want to, you can also use a link and that's what I did um, with uh, the uh, sample project that I shared with you and you can edit that project um, with that edit link or you can just share that read only view. Once you get done with your project and you want to submit it to something um, like a journal or the gallery, oops, I have to recompile, there we go. Um, you can click that submit button. And you can search for uh, journals. And once you um, click on that submit to a journal or to um, uh, a repository or some author services. Um, it will start a, um, it'll show an interstitial window and depending on how we are connected with that, you'll either have a direct submission link, which will not require you to download anything, or you'll have these easy download and submit links that will just direct you to the um, journal repository or service. One of the most interesting things I think that we have here is our full project history. So you can see all of the changes that have happened. You can also label your versions. And this is available even if you're um, on a free plan. Um, you can see all of your versions from all the way back. You only get that full project history on one of the paid plans, but you can, right now it's in a compare mode. So it's telling me um, this is what was added and when, and then I can go back and just view that um, single version that I'm on right now. If I want to label it, I can. I'll call this V2. And then I can click history and get back out of that. OK. And then we're getting short on time. Um, and I just wanted to make sure to show you our references here. So references are held in a bib file. You can export a bib file from just about any uh, reference manager. Or again, if you have that premium account and you have Mendeley or Zotero, you can set up that automatic linking. Um, once you um, start using your references, you actually can just, um, if you type backslash site, and this is one of the nice features of Overleaf, it, is it has that um, automatic completion. Um, I have only one reference here, so it's prompting me for that one. And I can put that in there. Um, again, a second time. So I might reject this one since I already made that reference, but there you go. And then you can also change your bibliography style really easily. So let me put in Chicago and see if that works. And then if I recompile, you'll see we've changed from uh, the plain into the Chicago style. We're just about out of time. Um, and this has been a very quick tour of Overly. If you have any other questions, please feel free to get in touch with me at ryan.looney at overleaf.com or get in touch with our support team at support at overleaf.com.